And welcome back, everyone, to the Bitcoin Business Bureau. I'm your host, as always, Litecoin Leader. I wanted to talk today about something that comes up a lot in our, my AMAs, questions, just meeting people, meetups, and it's about alternatives to fiat currency. And I'm not just talking about crypto, although I will today. Of course, it's a crypto channel. You have to talk about crypto, Bitcoin, the altcoins, and so on. But I'm also going to talk about having peace of mind and cash and precious metals like silver and gold. Now, why do we talk about this? Well, first off, diversification. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. So there, there, are, big, there are Bitcoin maximalists that say stack sats and nothing else. I understand that. There's also people that want to have strong cash positions. But often what I like, people talk about diversification and also peace of mind. How much should you have of each? And what should you plan for for when SHTF? I think you all know when that what that means. And what, what happens if the fiat system uh, blows up? So a lot of people ask me about this and happened in my last AMA. And typically the question goes like this, like, well, how much cash should you have on hand? Or how much precious metal should I have? How much silver should I have? Um, and what's the time frame? What do we want to do? Um, so uh, I left my phone on, but hopefully it'll be quiet for this video. Uh, so what I want to talk about, first off, not financial advice. Hashtag NFA. That goes without saying on all my videos. It's not financial advice. I'm not a tax advisor, not a financial advisor. None of that stuff. Just a guy talking on the internet. But what I will say is that I'll give you a lawyer type answer, which is that the answer is it depends. It really comes down to what will make you feel comfortable and what will allow you to sleep at night. So should you have cash? Yes. Should you have, I, my, I would recommend to people, or I, I would say that most people that I know that are planning for the, uh, the inevitable end of our financial system as, a new, as we know it, as we transition to a new one, is that you want to be diversified. You want to have positions in all three. You want to have cash. You want to have precious metals, typically silver. Most people like silver. Gold, we'll talk about that too. And also that you want to have cryptos. So the, the idea is it's three buckets. So bucket number one, cash. You want to have cash on hand because you never know when the ATMs will stop working or when cash will be the only thing that works, or the credit cards stop working. I've, I saw a video, I think it was uh, I Allegedly, I think is the channel, and he was talking about how his bank account, one of his credit cards, they just dropped. Now, they did two things They were bad. They, they And hopefully I can remember to link his video up here, because I always like to give credit. But um, if not, I Allegedly, it's a good channel, find him out. He's a part of Ninja Nation, uh, as am I. So, um Two things that his credit card company did to him. First off, they tacked on a credit reporting fee for every month. So now he's got a fee every month of $12.50, which makes no sense. Um, just it's just another way for them to charge you for something that they already did. Okay. They did that anyway. They reported to credit agencies no matter what. And then secondly, they dropped his uh, credit limit significantly from like, I don't know, like $10,000 down to like 1500 So now... Like that, that, if you don't know credit scores and the credit, this credit score system, the FICO system, that's going to implode soon too. Uh, that's going to be part of the system. It's all part of that financial system. But what happens is that you're when they do that, they, they will drop your balance. Oh, they did the third thing too. I almost forgot. They also said that any payments don't get credited to your account for five business days. So if you make a payment, say your payment's due on September 1st and you make a payment on August 30th you think you're in the clear you are not because technically you'll be late because they need five business days so they got you they'll hit you with a late fee it's terrible what they're doing so what can you do and and oh so how that impacts your credit line or your credit rating is that when they drop your credit limit you're now you're you're closer to being maxed out which is not good for your credit score so all that stuff is going to be impacting everybody's credit scores, and that's why we're, we have to transition to a new system. How do we do that? Well, we prepare in three buckets. Bucket no number one, have some cash on hand, have cash available. Now, I've talked about it. I'm going to put a link up here about bank balance. So the bank balance are important. Uh, you don't want to have too much available in larger banks because they could bail it in and claim that money. Keep it in a credit union, not financial advice, but some people I know, they use credit unions, and I did the video on the bank balance. I'll, I'll Put that up there as well um, to, to avoid that possibility. Uh, and it goes back to what had the great uh, 2008, the, the GFC, the global financial crisis. All the banks starting in 2010 need to have a bankruptcy plan thanks to the Dodds-Frank rule or Dodds-Frank Dodds law. And the bigger banks will bail in or confiscate basically your, your assets 
and redistribute them to the higher priority stockholders and creditors, meaning that your money is not yours anymore. So what do you do? You have you keep money on hand, keep money maybe in a credit union, keep money in, in something that's more liquid. It could be a, a stable coin that you're confident in, like USDC. And that that's what you, or you just have money that's wherever you want to store it, or money, correction, currency, dollars, uh, however you want to store it to keep your own peace of mind. It's just a matter of how much stress do you want to have in your life? So cash and cash equivalents you need to have in part. And, and precious metals are part of that because they're very liquid. You can go to a, a coin store, a pawn shop and get them uh, transitioned to dollars if you really need them for whatever reason. But there is a price you pay for that. First off, you have to go there. You have to spend the time, the energy, and you're not going to get 100% of your money back unless the price has fluctuated in your favor. So again, three buckets, cash on hand, and that could be one month of bills. It could be six months of bills. It's entirely up to you, whatever makes you sleep well at night. Second bucket is precious metals. That's gold and silver. Now, a lot of it, people will advise to have more silver than gold because historically silver has been 20 ounces, maybe even 15 for one ounce of gold. Right now it's about 70 or 75 because the price of silver, roughly $20 an ounce spot price. Not necessarily what you can buy it for, but you compare the spot prices of the two. Gold is about eighteen hundred dollars. Silver is about twenty bucks. So you do the math real quick. That's almost ninety to one. Okay, so it's fluctuating between seventy and nine and ninety. I've seen over a hundred before. So historically speaking, silver is more favorable than gold, but it's less portable. It obviously a hundred ounces of silver is much more difficult. Let's call it eighty. Eighty ounces of silver is a lot a lot harder to carry around than one ounce of gold. So that's bucket two is you want to have silver. And that's what you have if the cash system implodes too. If like banks stop giving out currency, there's no more dollars, there's no more dollars in circulation, uh, we'll transition or hyperinflation hits in and bread costs $100 an ounce, excuse me, $100 a loaf. And people don't have 100 bucks anymore. They have, like, all the cash is out of circulation. Then silver will become the currency that people use. And it's important to know what kind of silver to have how to hold on to it, and I'll come back to that in a moment. But the third bucket, because it's a crypto show, is your long-term play. So you have short, medium, and long-term. Short would be your cash or your, your currency. Medium would be your precious metals. And then long-term would be your crypto and long-term value assets, collectibles. Uh, I'm not going to put NFTs in that category because it's not a proven thing. But precious collectibles, precious uh, um, like the Mona Lisa would be in that category, like a, a collectible car. Uh, things that hold value over a long time, uh, maybe something that the, the wealthy would do, would would still desire, the upper 1% would still want to have uh, and holds value long term. And that's like the, a classic car would might fit in that category. Uh, so that's but the classic one, like the, the, the simplest answer is cash, silver, crypto. Uh, and, and that's or cash coins, crypto. That, that's the simplest way to remember it. And. The, the amount you have in each one is entirely up to you. Crypto, I would say, your long-term assets, you're looking at like a year and beyond. Okay, so that's stuff you don't want to touch. It's just you're stacking sats. You're just putting that money out there for the future, for the inev inevitable as we see it, or as many of us see it, that we'd go to a new system that's crypto-based and Bitcoin and altcoins are all major contributors there. But to get to there, you, if cash starts to crumble, uh, you, will have ca you should have some cash on hand. And you need to be careful about the banks and where you store that cash. Secondly, coins, silver. So that's this is an oversized one. This is not a typical um, eagle. This is a two ounce replica eagle. So it's not an actual re real eagle. But I'm I'm going to show you in a moment how to how to check silver. So uh, eagles are probably the best thing to collect. They're the most uh, most liquid asset, but they also have the highest premium. Um, this is not an older quarter. This is a younger quarter, but it quarters, 19 quarters and dimes between before 1965 and half dollars of, um, uh, same time frame and maybe a couple more years, years later, uh, any coin before 1965, 64 and older is 90% silver. And the way they figured it out is like any, any coins that are at up to a dollar 40 equals an ounce of gold, I'm sorry, an ounce of silver. I'm sorry. So an, a dollar 40 face value of silver so say you had ten dollars in quarters that are 1964 or older that would be seven ounces of silver so 
and that would be worth at least $140. And typically I'm seeing prices almost at 200. Um, in fact, I can go and I'm going to add that to the tab here. And let's pull up at max and see what the price is today. Uh, just for 10 ounces of, let me share my screen. Okay, that is here. So if I go to at max, right, I don't need that anywhere. So let's go, you go to uh, silver and you're looking for junk silver, 90% silver. I'm going to look for $10. Um, let's see, 90% silver coins. All right, so I'm looking for $10, 10 of face value. That's $203. Okay, now I just said that that is seven ounces of silver. So seven ounces of silver at this price is almost thirty dollars. So you're paying a premium because if I go back here, here's the price. Silver is twenty and a half. So it should be about one hundred and forty-five. So it's like a sixty-dollar premium almost here to buy this because smaller quantity and uh, they're making a profit. And so this is the difference between keeping silver in in cash. It's like you're paying sixty extra dollars to get that silver right now. If you buy more. Like if I bought, uh, let's go to a thousand, please. A thousand. That's there's no discount. So there's all, there's no discount at all. So that's that's pretty bad that there's no discount on that. So, I mean, there are other sites. There's let's see. There's J M Bullion, I think. Wrong J M Bullion. J M Bullion. Let's see what their prices are. They're gonna have the same silver price, but let's see. Uh, they could have various things on sale. You can see the deals, but let's see. Let's see silver. And we're going to get a silver coins. I see it was just their silver. 90% coins. 90% silver. They have 63 products. Let's see. They've got. So. Jeez. You make this difficult. That's just shop quarters, all right? So ten dollars and quarters, please. Ten dollars and quarters is two tenths, is actually higher. But if you go to hundred, it's it's it should be ten. Wow, that is not right. Well, it depends on the type of quarters too. So there's there's not giving much discount um, at all. I'm looking for the thousand dollar level, which I don't. There's a th out of stock. So they're getting harder to find. So. The reason I was talking about silver, so again, just, just to talk briefly, we're talking about uh, short, medium, and long term. And I, there's people that have talked about silver, and I'm going to show you a silver test in a moment. But uh, I did share this vi this video on on uh, on my Twitter, which thanks to Joanna posting this is uh, from Bald Guy Money. And he went through, uh, you need this much silver to be in the top 1, 5, and 20% of all stackers. Here's the quick answer. Um, top 20%, you need about 50 ounces. You need be in this range. He does the math in this video, but I just wanted to give you a quick summary. Top 5%, you need about 150. Top 1%, you need about 500 ounces. So 500 ounces would be about, uh, that would be $700 face value, roughly. Yeah, exactly, 700 feet. So that would cost you, um, well, you could see if, if, if you bought it today, it's uh, $10, so 70 times, so about $14,000 of silver. So that, but you'd be in the top 1%. And that goes back to this, this picture, which is the Pareto distribution of wealth. So let me drop out of here and I will show you how to do the silver test. That's not, uh, where was I? And there we go. So lastly, the silver test. Okay. So I'm going to try and do this in camera. It's going to be a little small and see how it looks. This, this little magnet right here is a rare earth magnet okay so if you take this and just put it on like a metal i got a knife so i put a knife and it's a stainless steel i put hold it at an angle if i put the magnet on you can put it on an edge you can see click it does not move um, if i put it on and this is a smaller quarter so it's not so it's i put it in a smaller quarter and it won't it, it i'm going to use the bigger coin the reason i have this bigger silver this is probably the better example so this is how it should behave on a piece of real silver. This is two ounces of silver, not one. So I put this, and I'll put it on the edge and see. It, it, it slides. You can see it sliding down. It gets right to the edge of the lip and then it falls off. You, the, that, and the reason it slides slowly is that silver is semi-magnetic. 
and it, it doesn't it won't clink and stay in place it won't slide off fast if it was just pure met if it was just like something that's uh aluminum um if i had an aluminum can which i don't unfortunate but i'm looking around my room looking for aluminum nope um no wait a minute this screen, I think, I think the screen is aluminum. But if I put it on this, it's gonna, it would fall right off. Even if I try to hold it on, yeah, it's gone. It went, it, got, it went that fast. So, aluminum, it'll f go fast. But if it goes on silver, right? Again, silver. If I put it on here, I put it flat, right? Sort of flat. You can see it. Let's not get off my finger. See, it's sliding very slowly until it drops off okay that's what you want to see that is silver and then lastly i'm going to share my screen uh and i'm going to go back over to here and you can see that these magnets there's a here's a 40 pack from amazon for eight bucks right and you get them all different sizes okay and those would be great to have i have little tiny ones that i got for a couple bucks uh one at one point um uh, but you can see for eight dollars you can go and if this this is great if you're at a pawn shop or if you're at um uh a secondhand store of any kind and you think you haven't found silver you want to test it have some of these magnets with you and you can see how well it slides or doesn't slide it gives you a good indication if it's regular if it's really silver 90 percent or higher or not so that's all i really wanted to say share and say today again three buckets cash coins crypto that's the simple way to remember it how much you put in each one is entirely up to you but i recommend de-stress yourself what makes you sleep well at night? Do you want to have a year's worth of cash? And you can you can do that. But again, keep in mind the bail in thing. So that's so you have to store it properly. You have to store your silver properly. You have to store. You know, obviously self custody is all, always recommended because then you have full control over your wealth. Again, not financial advice. What are your thoughts? Which did you like this video? Do you want to see more about silver? Do you want to? Uh, I, I'm sure I can probably do a few more silver videos. I know I've done some in the past. Uh, maybe I'll find another one and link it up here if I can. But if you just search my channel with the word silver, a couple more might might pop up pretty quickly. So, um, in fact, I could probably check that out. Uh, go to my YouTube channel, and let's 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 see, let's see your let's see your videos. And how about I share my screen while I do this? There we go. There's all my videos. I've got a boatload of videos. Uh, and I search across my channel and I type in the word silver. There we go. We got two uh, $600 silver. And then let's talk about hedging your bets with silver. So there's another one from February. So there's two other videos I've done for silver. I'll try, uh, again, just search them more and I'll try to remember to put the link up in the corner. All right. So what are your thoughts? What do you think about the three bucket theory about how we transition? Because you, at first, cash will, cash will be king. It's always been a recommendation throughout time that when things go on on sale cash is king secondarily um coins silver and gold gold has its advantages so does silver they have they both have their place in the economy um they've always been money for five thousand years of human history so or so we are told but it's pretty much the world standard of money is gold and silver so and then long-term assets things that are appreciate things that are appreciate against dollars and other measures of value um that's crypto and collectible so what are your thoughts what do you think about the three bucket theory uh what are you doing for your own plants i'd love to see them in the comments again don't share too much okay you don't want to share exact numbers but tell me like how do you what where do you feel comfortable i'd love to hear about it um lots more to come so with all that said i'm gonna close the door on the bureau say follow leader one more time and i'll talk to you soon take care